you feel small. We were a couple hundred miles away from the nearest people. That makes you about as isolated as the astronauts on the space station. The Arctic was like an alien planet, it was not like Earth. Even the rocks don't look like regular rocks. The Arctic does strange things to humans. You just feel like an Arctic creature that lives there and tries to survive. We faced a lot of challenge, but we knew that the stakes are high. It was one of the biggest projects from the Mars Society, so we feel on our shoulder lots of pressure to do this mission right. We are now on the uh, top of the hill of Rikens. Over. Uh, Alex, uh, this is John. Yes, John, go ahead. We've got plenty of time. Uh, everybody's feeling good. So I, I think we do a quadrat here as well. Uh, it won't take too long. The Mars 160 objective to conduct twin studies in both the desert and the Arctic under Mars-like conditions is the first of its kind among Mars analog research and is being documented by journalist Anastasia Stepanova. Dr. Alexandre Manjou commands the crew of eight men and women, representing eight countries from around the world. Biologist Anna Sri Srivastava and artist Anna Lee Bietzi. In addition to working with the crew's geologists, Bietzi is helping Srivastava document the presence of lichens, a species that is adapted to extreme environments and may prove vital to discovering signs of previous life on Mars. They are very much adapted to live in desiccated areas, high UV radiation. That's why they are relevant for uh, you know, Martian prospecting. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's life out there, but as you dig deeper, you realize it's actually a fairly uh, delicate but vibrant uh, ecosystem. The Flashline Station provides an ideal site for geologist Paul Knightley and Dr. Jonathan Clark to study hypoliths, extremophiles that thrive in Mars-like environments situated on the edge of a 39 million year old impact crater. The site's uneven terrain and freezing temperatures serve as a constant reminder of the dangers of a real Mars mission. This is our home. This is our habitat on Mars. If we go outside, you're dead. Designing and maintaining fail-proof systems falls to the Mars 160 engineers. The work of Claude-Michel Laroche includes maintaining the desert station's operations, while Dr. Manju's projects include a new suit interface. Yusuke Murakami, an architecture designer and researcher, is testing the feasibility of building his new temporary dome shelter while fully suited. Would it be easier with a longer one? No, it's just that the helmet is in the way. We cannot get close enough, and we have very little room to play with. Beyond the need for shelter and other mission-critical resources, the human factor, especially the extreme isolation of an extended trip to Mars, will play a large role in mankind's ability to move into deep space. There are some people around the world that say we shouldn't send a crew to Mars because it would be too psychologically hard to, for the crew to handle the situation. Many of them, they don't understand why we are doing it. They think we're just stuck in a tuna can. So I want to show them that we are actually doing it not just to play around, but for, for our future. You think, oh, it would be so hard to live without like internet or that and that. You actually see the world as a luxury and you understand that the human needs a lot less than we think uh, to be happy and to appreciate life. 
look into the crater where else and which gym that will provide you to bicycle with the view to a crater. The landscape is so breathtaking and especially you see your crewmates walking in the spacesuit and this grayish orange hills. I was like, wow. Since the Mars Society established the FMARS station in 2000 and MDRS in 2001, nearly 200 crews with well over 1,000 crew members have participated in simulated Mars missions. Across the globe, the quest to expand humanity's collective knowledge and experience has accelerated. With additional analog studies, including the Mars 500, and high seas programs, as well as planned missions in China and Poland. I learned a lot about what it takes to plan an expedition, and then once you're actually in simulation, what uh, sort of conditions astronauts would be up against. Really proud that we achieved uh, so much uh, during this program. If someone wants to send us to Mars, we will be ready for that.